sticking with the theme of Italian cuisine, I wanted to make another Italian dish for dinner tonight. I want to make ragu. As you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot to make a really delicious ragu pasta sauce. Um, it takes a mix of ground beef and ground pork. It takes some tomato paste. It takes some butter, not all of this butter, I'm just going to use a little bit of it. It takes some whole milk. It takes some red wine, this is where mom and dad can help out. And also it takes an even mix of diced carrots, celery, and onion. Fun fact, in French cooking this is called a mirepoix. It also takes some black pepper and some salt to season in the end. So in just a second, we're going to go back to our soup pot, which has been preheating on my stove to about medium heat, and we're going to start cooking up a storm and make our ragu. I should also mention that typically with a ragu, you're going to serve that with a pasta that's kind of like tagliatelle. Long, thin strips of pasta, and I even made some pasta dough last night, so we're going to have our ragu tonight with homemade pasta. You can check out my video on how to make pasta if you want to do this yourself. Here we are ready to begin cooking our ragu. We're going to start with a medium hot big soup dish, and I've added maybe a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of olive oil to that, because we're going to begin by browning our ground pork and beef. And we're going to break this up and cook it just until it's brown. Now that our beef and our pork has finished browning, we're going to add about 50 grams of butter to our mixture. Quite a bit of butter, surprisingly. We're going to let that melt down just a little bit. And then we're going to add the mirepoix, the celery, onions, and carrot into this mixture and we're going to cook all of those vegetables with the meat until the onions are translucent or see-through-ish and soft. There's our butter melted so now we can add the mirepoix and remember we're cooking this until the onions are clear and soft. So that's probably going to take five or six minutes. Our onions are looking perfect and so last but not least it's time to add the tomato puree and we're going to simmer all of this together for about five minutes. The time has come to add what is for now our final ingredient. We will add one more ingredient about three hours from now, but we won't worry about that. For now, we're going to add the red wine. And now this needs to cook very gently for about three hours. So we mix in our red wine, and we do want this to bubble a little bit, and then we're going to cover it, and we're going to turn that heat way down low, and just let it sit and not worry about it at all. I'm just going to wait until it gets a few little bubbles. I can already see them, so there we go, it's done. I'm going to reduce my temperature to almost as low as it will go, put a lid on, and then come back in three hours. Here we are about three hours later, and it's time to add the milk to our bolognese. Now, in my absent-mindedness, I accidentally came down my stairs, middle of the end of the workday, and I poured the milk in already. So this is actually bolognese with my milk already added, and now I need to continue cooking it covered, slightly bubbly, for about the next 40 to 45 minutes, and then, my friends, my sauce will be finished. Our bolognese has simmered deliciously for another 40 minutes with its milk added, and so now the sauce is ready, my homemade pasta is boiled and cooked, and I've even got a little bit of Parmesan cheese to go on top. So let's go ahead and serve up dinner. We're going to start with a healthy helping of delicious pasta. And there's two schools of thought here. You can mix the sauce in with your pasta and actually cook it with a little bit of the pasta water. Today, just because it's quick and easy for me, I'm putting my bolognese ragu over the top of my pasta. And then just because I like it, I'm going to sprinkle it 
with some grated Parmesan cheese. And there we have bolognese ragu. Enjoy!